Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Hearthstone Grand Prix here at DreamHack Winter. Two incredibly long days of Swiss and single elimination bracket action have narrowed us all the way down from nearly 200 players to just four. And we are ready to get into semi-final action. Joined now by Frodan and Life Coach to talk you through the first of these semi-finals. Frodan, welcome back to the cast, our Thanks. first semi-final. We're going to see you need the French player who's really been taking this bracket by storm so far up against Vegus. Which of these two players both having kind of a breakout performance here. If you had to pick one, which one have you been more impressed with? Well, you know, I gotta say that I feel like Unid has had a lot of good performances over time, so I feel like it's more due for him. I think what's more impressive too on the surface level is that Wegus hasn't been competing that long, and it's really easy for players who don't have that much experience to falter through a lot of other situations, maybe not even related to the game, like getting nervous. So I would say they're about equal in my book. Sure. Love catch. How do, you, how do you feel about this? Because coming into the top eight, we had a good mix of kind of the established pros and a few of these up and coming names, the people who would, you know, you describe maybe erroneously as dark horses. But now we're coming down to a top four where we have a good chance of really ending up with what a lot of people would call a surprise winner here. You know, how do you feel about the way this bracket is developed? Yeah, I think it's very fair. I mean, we also saw some performance um, like Vegas playing and Unite playing. I was really impressed by also Vegos uh, playing strengths, like making very, very little mi uh, misplays and just uh, also even under this pressure which uh, is created if you are watched by 10,000s of people, he didn't uh, lose his passion or he didn't lose his focus and just tried to play his best and yeah, I mean, uh, if I would uh, need to pick a favorite, I would say Vegos. <laughs> Nice. So yeah, both of these players not had the easiest route to get here. They've both been uh, crushing major winners on their way. Super JJ has been taken out and uh, Dawn and Ness all have major titles under their belt and have been taken out by these two players we're about to see on the other side of the bracket. The Fallen and Mitzahide will go up against each other in our, in our match following this one, who have also taken out some big names on the way. So really all of these players in the top four are giant killers in their own right just by making it this far. Yeah. The, sem the story of the semifinals is that on one side of the bracket, we had the strategy that we all expected to see. We saw the, the, the Zoo Warlock and the Ban Shaman strategy, where you pretty much try to use Zoo effectively as possible to try to corner your matchups from your opponents. On the other side of the bracket, though, you kind of throw it out and you have some people who bring some wonky stuff, um, like the Fallen, for example, who has this Control Shaman and Reno Jackson Warlock, which we didn't really expect to see either of those very much. Um, and, and even if you look, even fanning out to the top 16, Pakravok, and Stan Sivka also brought Reno Jackson Great. Warlock. So maybe there's more to the meta than we think about it, uh, which I'm always really excited to see from tournaments like this. Yeah, it's it's always tough, right? Because a lot of people, even very, very strong players, will come into tournaments like this and say, I'm just going to bring the good decks and I'm maybe going to tech them a little bit towards the mirrors and that's going to be where I get my advantage. But pretty much any good player is going to come up with that mentality, right? So do you really, life coach, you probably have more experience in this than anyone. Do you feel like you can get an advantage that way by just bringing the best lineup or do you have to try and come up to a counter strategy to be successful? Well, I think it also depends very much on what counters what. So sometimes if there are really hard counters to things, if some decks have 60, 70 percent matchups and also 30 or 40 percent matchups against other decks, then yes, then you might uh, want to predict the meta and how it will be and then just try to hard counter that. But at the very moment, most of the matchups are like soft counters at best. So having 55, 60 percent or 45 and uh, I think the best strategy is just to bring the best decks in those meta games. Okay, does the, the concern of Last Hero Standing versus Conquest, because perhaps Last Hero Standing is the rarer format mm -hmm. these days, which is what we're playing, so if you're preparing for this format in particular, does that bring anything into the equation in terms of whether or not you just want to bring the strongest strategies? Is it worth like maybe having one snipe deck in your lineup, for example, to take out like Zoo, for example, that's so dominant? Mm. Yeah, maybe having the one or the other counter would not hurt, or especially probably specifically in, with the techs. So you pr will probably tech your decks um, different. So maybe putting more anti-aggro stuff so that you can hard counter zoo or soft counter zoo in a better way. Yeah, sure. It makes sense. So it looks like we are just ready to take a look now at the decks and bans. So I don't think we're going to see too many surprises here. As Frodan mentioned, we're looking at this core strategy. Warrior, Druid, Zoo, and the Shaman is banned. So not a great deal to say about this. We've kind of broken down this dynamic over the course of the three-day broadcast here. It's just going to be the powerhouse decks coming up against each other. And time after time, Frodan, we've seen this kind of series defined by the Zoo mirror. Yeah, absolutely. I think that's 
you know, for better or for worse, what people's lineup is hinged upon. They say, what's your best matchup? Well, you know, my best matchup is Zoo versus Zoo. And if they're able to win that, then they're favored against everything else. And I, I think you start seeing what would happen in a metagame if Shaman doesn't really exist. People are looking at mid-range Shaman as public enemy number one. Oh my god, I can't play against another Shaman. I'm, I want to, you know, I'd rather do so much other stuff. I'd rather uninstall the game than play Shaman. <laughs> but now when you see what happens when Shaman goes, guess what? There's another deck that rises up and stands oppressive across everything else. This is a lesson in just how metagame cycles. Uh, you know, same thing happened with Patron Warrior. When we removed Patron Warrior from dominance, guess what rose in through the ashes? It was Secret Paladin, something that was being kept at bay even though people didn't see it it's very much the same exact thing here because shaman doesn't have the ability to use to just wipe zoo with the floor with portals and lightning storm you see zoo's dominance in this tournament we sure do and we will find out right away how dominant zoo is going to be for vegu's at least it's got its best matchup in the lineup against the spell druid the malagos druid of you need we're going to get right into game one now to decide our first finalist and calling the action for you will be frodan and life coach Thank you very much, Slipper. All right, so game one, Druid versus Zoo. This is going to be really crucial for Unite if he's able to steal this game. Because, and, and I say that emphatically because I've yet to really see Druid live up to the 40% that it's acclaimed to in this matchup. I've been seeing more like 10% win rate, it feels like, uh, because uh, Zoos have been dominating Druids this weekend. Yeah, that's true, and we also see that the Druid uh, start still needs some cards. I mean, yeah, the Raven Idol can pull you something, but maybe not. Uh, Furish also not the very best card. I mean, can also stabilize a little bit or slow it down, but the Ends in the War still needs to uh, um, still need some turns. But Ooh. this Living ri Roots uh, pickup is just so insane. Yeah, massive. You can see how fast. Flame Imps can snowball. I think it was actually a series with you, I cast it, where it was double Flame Imp and oh, even yes. fire. It's like oh, by yeah. turn four, it was dead. That was just crazy. Yeah. Uh, so you need being able to stabilize against the Flame Imp pretty big. Uh, but for now, uh, I think he's also happy to see turn two. Not much being developed for the zoo either. So this kind of gives him some breathing room here. Oh, definitely. I mean, a turn two villager is not what Zoo is usually hoping for. And also the Silverback Golem in the hand. I mean, with still having some cards in your hand, it's also not that uh, utilizable. Mm -hmm. yeah, Alright, so uh, you need easy snipe on the Imp Gang boss, so he desires with the Feral Rage. Uh, you know, just, a lot, just making sure that Zoo never builds up a huge board, so that way cards like Defender of Argus don't blow you out. It is one of the more problematic cards as you start hitting turn four onwards because things like Swipe, Wrath, and Living Roots lose a lot more effectiveness against a board like that. So, oh, a Dunga, that's kind of interesting. I mean, that leaves room up for a little bit more gamble. So maybe using the Soul Fire at some point and then follow it up into the Dunga. Yeah, uh, problem with Dark Pillars, you're putting more cards in your hand though, so less chance to discard the, the Silver Golem, but who knows, maybe if you end up picking a better hand, you, you hold off on the Doom Guard one turn. Uh, those can be a possibility as well. That's true. I mean, it's just very slow what the zoo is doing here. So you just give the druid all the time in the world, maybe even too much time, maybe time enough to coin into Nourish for Mana, into Ancient of War, and oh, yeah. that already poses a big problem for uh, Vicus. Yeah, Ancient of War, a card that's uh, pretty impactful against Zoo if you're able to keep their board size down. Um, a card that people actually cycled out uh, for a while. Right. People just really didn't bring it. Do you think, um, it, has it been coming back or do you feel like it's just a tournament deck? I think it's just something which is kind of very good against Zoo. So um, you need probably included it to have something against Zoo so that the, the, the Druid just has, instead of 40%, maybe 45, maybe even 50. Um, but this is really nice if you take a look at the curve. He can, oh, okay, he decides for, uh, okay. That's a very interesting one because he could have also decided for Coin into Nourish for Acceleration, killing one of these 1-1s one with a Shapeshift, into Ancient of War, into Sorison, again killing something, into a Drake, into Swipe. So what do you think about that, Froden? Well, when you say it like that, I can't disagree with you, Life Coach. It seemed that you saw the three-play, or three-turn line there. Uh, with Nourish getting out of your hand too, because Nourish is very clunky. It, you know, it's very rare that you get to give up so much tempo by using Nourish for the cards. And using it for crystals is better now than much later, so I, I'm inclined to agree there. I think uh, maybe what he saw was the potential threat of Swipe not being effective if his opponent had Defender of Argus and something else going on. And perhaps if um, his board got too big and then Ancient of War would be poorly traded into, that could also be 
devastating. Because if you look at like cards like Doomguard and whatnot, it's pretty effective against Ancient of War if you're able to trade into it with the existing board. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I definitely agree there too. Oh, unlucky. <laughs> Hell yeah, it is. My shield for Argus. And you know what? I mean, Druid's now getting pummeled. Really falling behind on board, even though losing that Doom Guard. Oh. Can this Ancient of War do enough? I guess we'll find out after this Raven Idol. I mean, this Ancient of War is also kind of a little bit fodder for this uh, council, man. So, actually, very bad timing for this Ancient of War coming down. Okay. Uh, I mean, my first thing that I glanced over was how good is Moonglade Portal if you're able to stick a big minion on board. But most likely you can't because the Councilman's there. So you're just trying to stop the bleeding. So I think he's going to use that second Raven Idol to try and fish for more AoE spells. Yeah, that's right. I mean, now, okay, probably tap Imgen Boss, another minion, trading two of these minions into this Ancient of War. Still confirming the hell that one health Councilman. I mean, not too bad. Yeah. The odds of drawing a two Ooh. cost or less is very high, and that's one of the best ones. So the councilman goes up to nine tech this turn. <laughs> oh man, that almost single-handedly answers the ancient of war. That's super scary. Would you send your white walker in, or would you send one of the other minions in? That's a good question. You already saw one swipe though, and your opponent uh, only has only played one ra uh, Raven Idol. I still think you sent the Void Walker in. Yeah, I also agree, because you also confirm one additional damage to the face immediately. So that's actually a pretty cool thing. Okay, and the position to make sure that the Imp Game boss slides right in in case his opponent has Starfall. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and also already beginning to pressure the life's Druid in terms of lethal, oh. so Druid doesn't have so much time to react anymore. Okay, uh, does the Moonfire improve things a lot? I mean, first he can clear off at least two things on the board. Or actually three things. Ooh, I know Wow, if he picks up Swipe... That would that be pretty good. Starfall? No, oh, just one, one mana off. Maybe, a, maybe the second Moonfire. That helps you clean up a lot, too. I guess he has to. Um, <laughs> he, the Order! <laughs> Imagine if he raped out of the first! Oh man, oh. it's also so close because um, if you think about it, the Maligos will come down just... Oh, oh my god! If he could just just delay them just a little bit longer because uh, with Maligos in combination, <laughs> those just need 5 damage more. Yeah, that's pretty sick. I mean, you can still keep it for this turn, uh, because or for next turn, because uh, Moonfire with Maligos lets you snipe a minion. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, Druid has a chance! Uh, well, had, had a chance. <laughs> <laughs> That's 10 damage, so not enough to kill. Oh, man. Malagos has a tall order here. So, no. Oh, hold on. I mean, the Nourish can probably draw into something, but just probably not enough to deal with all of that stuff. You can Malagos and play Raven, um, Living Roots and, and Moonfire. Moonfire, and that stabilizes. High likelihood that he still dies, but he's still alive. So there are four damage on the board. So Vegas needs either the other Soul Fire or a Doom God. Yeah. Or he could tap into two things if he has Abusive Sergeant plus something else. Mm -hmm. But even if Vegas um, doesn't uh, isn't able to kill you need in this very turn, it's still I mean you need still needs a lot of stuff, right? The Nourish has to confirm some spells which can then get rid of the board. Four minions now. I don't know. I've seen Nourish be able to bail out Druids before in the past. He still has one more swipe in the deck. But it is the very ferrite. scary. The Ferret's probably also being very important. Oh, wait. Isn't there like a weird chance where like if he swipes too fast, that Knife Yoga could kill him <laughs> because of that? Oh, he doesn't find it. I guess he's dead. There's just no way to stop that much pressure. Hmm. Maybe we will see another 3 0 Zeus sweep here. <laughs> Yeah. That would be crazy. Uh, that'd be crazy considering that Wegus, every time he's been on stream, has been sweeping with Zoo. Exactly. Zero. exactly. Every single time. It's like uh, the, the, the deck that's almost going to be iconic to him if he wins this tournament. One, one game at a time, though. Let's not get ahead of ourselves. The Warrior is being queued up here from You Need. And a lot of people, when they brought Warrior, specifically thought about using it to kill Zoo, whether mm -hmm. Dragon Warrior or even just taking their Control Warrior. To try to kill Zoo. 
I mean, it's very important that Zu respects kind of things like revenge. So always just putting down the 13 and then seeing how it goes. But Warrior already got this fiery works and the Ravaging Ghoul and the Barns. So, oh, <laughs> I mean, that's looking very, very good for the Warrior. That's nasty. Being able to have Fiery War Axe. And you know what? Having Barnes with the Ravaging Ghoul means that it's less likelihood that you get in trouble from that. Uh, Barnes outside of the Ravaging Ghoul has Nazoth and Justicar True Heart is the only dud when you play it on turn four. Get it out! Get it out! Yeah, at least the minion which cannot um, become Fiery War Axe, but still good. Yeah, Zoo, Zoo's just gonna have to hope that your opponent doesn't have the Fire War Axe. The win rate for Warriors skyrockets when this ends up happening because you're able to play so efficiently against the early game threats from Zoo. I mean, Yuni just has everything, right? I mean, he has the Fire War Axe, the Raging Ghoul. Even the revenge for later, just amazing. Yeah, I don't even know what you really need from this spot if your opponent's able to destroy you. Wow, he even picks up Jessica True Horse. So that's another thing that you won't get from Barnes. Look at that! Yeah, not only that, but um, he will with this kind of hand, he will definitely stabilize into turn 8. And by turn 8, he can just play the Justica Druid and also force Zoo to bring him under 12 life, and then the revenge will hit. Yeah, I was oh kind of feeling like Sylvanas or something as impactful as that. You, this is kind of what Barnes was expected to do, um, given that you've already drawn the cards that don't do anything. Mm -hmm. It was but either this or Cairn, so... <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, okay, that's right. Yeah. But the Sylvanas is just so huge here. It's pretty it's annoying. insane. Yeah, I mean, Weggy's actually so introduced with quite the conundrum here. What's the best way to play around Sylvanas? Or perhaps... No, you have, you have to kind of make sure Sylvanas dies this turn, right? It's too risky otherwise. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. I mean, you can you can attack Sylvanas and hope that she steals a 1-1, one, one, but <laughs> kind of very weak. How's the interaction with Sylvanas and Imp King Boss? You know, if Imp King Boss attacks into Sylvanas, mm -hmm. will the 1-1 one, one be created before the steal? Yeah, I guess so. Yeah, I guess so. Get it out! Get it out! So and that is what he's going for. Yes. Oh. <sighs> This is so awkward for Zu and it's piece of the Alright, the average res expected result. Yep. Yeah, I guess Direwolf Alpha not that impactful. And all things considering, Sylvanas is very annoying, but definitely uh, could have been a lot worse. Oh, uh, no, the, uh, no, okay, the Torrent first. Yeah. yeah, Torrent doesn't usually get to bully things much, but 1 1s it's definitely pretty good against. Yeah, I like it very much. The Torrent basically plays as a 5-5 five -five here, effectively, so it's pretty good. And Wegius does have a turn 5 play with uh, Flame Imp and Defender of Argus. It's not exactly the kind of Argus you want, though. When you're in a position as Zoo and you're playing Defender of Argus to trade up in minions, that's usually uh, an awkward spot to be in. Yeah, I also don't see. I mean, Vegas Be has just so awkward turns, and that is without knowing what you need still has in his hand. All right, with Ravaging Ghoul Revenge. Okay. He's gonna immediately taunt up here. Mm -hmm. I'm mean, just making the best out of his resources. So then, on the following turn from you, need it's Ravaging Ghoul. Really impactful again. Mm -hmm. Perhaps he doesn't even have to need to use it, but it, it also puts a three-three on the field, so I don't mind. Yeah, it's a very good one. Yeah, you just trade this in, ravaging cool, trade the two-one into whatever you want. It's just very, very good. Probably even into the three-one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I think the warlock needs to draw Doom Guard then, essentially, and then you have a chance to come back in the game. Yeah, maybe. In his mind. Yeah, a Doom Guard uh, would be a nice thing, but no. Nope. Oh yeah, actually yes. <laughs> Not immediately though, yeah. but that will cost him. Just giving the warrior the ability or the time to deploy Jessica Truth is already bad enough. I guess you had the mana you can play this. Yeah. The only way that it would be beneficial to keep would be if you draw Malchazar's in, but that's very unlikely. So mm -hmm. I think it's that's fine. right. And Warrior can pretty much just sit on the life gain and the AoE, the single target removal. Zoo has to. Oh. Oh. <laughs> there he is. <laughs> well, he gets damage on board preemptively. Late to the party. Yeah. That's actually pretty hilarious. 
And on the other hand, he, uh, Vekus can confirm three more damage like this, so effectively he traded three damage for that card. Yeah, and I don't mind. So you probably trade your Imp, 3-3 three, three goes face, probably the Doomguard also goes face. So the, the, you, do, you do, would you Doomguard here and then just life tap? Because like, it's the card versus the 1-3 on the board. I don't oh. know how impactful the 1-3 is right now. Okay, interesting. Oh, uh, I'm not sure, I would have probably played the 1-3, but Vegos agrees. I mean, I feel like the Malchazar Zimp's not going to be nearly as impactful mm -hmm. versus being able to draw into, like, the closer he is to probably his second Doom Guard, yep. he probably can win the game. Interesting, if he wants to play around, uh, like, to just trade here. But I think he's just going face. You don't have much time. Tanka puts you on quite the, 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 the low clock. You have to end the game as fast as you can. Yeah, and that's probably also what Vegas is thinking. So, basically what you said, trying to get to this second Doomguard as soon as possible. Ah, being a little bit greedy here, just taking it slow, not really answering the Doomguard. Mm -hmm. I don't yeah. mind. Yeah, he could have also shield block, tank up and shield slam, that's right. So, I mean, how he played it, he gives the Doomguard another attack or the ability to attack first before he shield slams it. So, I'm not exactly sure. Right, what's the sequencing here? I guess because the juggles, well, the juggles won't really get past the first half of the body. You can do it for the second half. Let's see what this peddler picks up. <laughs> Shifter Zerus? Okay. I actually like Shifter Zerus a lot in this position. You need something crazy to help you out, and that card could generate anything. Imagine if it gave you something like a new Barak. <laughs> I, I'm just saying, like, you have to kind of. Hey, uh, sh what was it? Shoot for the fences or a swing for the fences here? Yeah, I like it. I like the shift to zeros also very much. The Anubarak argument, um, yeah, is definitely convincing. Or something like it, you know. You don't have to have exact like Deathwing, you know, like some of these really powerful cards. Even if it got you a reasonably sized fat minion like an eight eight, I think you need to do it. Uh, all of a sudden, I'm excited for this game. Yeah, yeah. I, I was, it was it was a little bit kind of falling asleep there, but I think. Uh, I think this Shift of Zeros is very spicy. All right. Okay. It could even be another Doom Guard. <laughs> <laughs> so let's see. Uh, I mean, ah, oh. uh, Runic Egg. But even if the Anubarak would come down, I mean, there are still Sylvanas into Shields and Sylvanas and stuff like this. Oh, but no. Don't discard the Shift no, of Zeros. don't. <laughs> Not like this. But the Doom Guard's too hard to pass up. You have to just put the pressure on, right? Yeah, he could also play. Um, he could also play the two one drops. Oh no, he's playing everything. Okay, I see. Oh. Okay. Interesting. Sure. Wow. Well, that shift of Zeris definitely didn't live up to his potential. No. <laughs> I have no As a father, life coach, though. you are very disappointed, right? <laughs> that, it's just a runic egg. It could have been so much more in life. But at least the trades were very well into the Savannah, so uh, Vigus can now trade everything into her and basically denying the steal, which is already kind of huge. Ah, yeah, you're right about that. Uh, all of a sudden, any minion that Vegas puts out, like this Doom Guard, is less punishing. Oh, that that librarian draw, though. Yeah, it's not really ideal, but Vegas will also confirm to draw an additional bonus card first, so the chances to discard the Doom Guard if you place the Darkshire Librarian first are also not that high. All right, so Wegius probably will draw first here, see what he gets. Mm -hmm. And I guess he's looking for Silverware Golem. Unless he wants to play the holdout game, which I don't really recommend. Oh, does he go for the 50-50? <gasps> Ooh. I like it. Oh, he's going for the risk. Oh, he's getting it. Yeah, you have to be risky. Ultimately, it kind of doesn't matter, though, because Warrior's got so much. It's got Brawl and Shield Slam. Very easy to deal with. No matter what comes out on the other end, his fate is sealed. Send that Doom Guard back to the Abyss. And I don't know what Wegius needs to do. Second Dark Peddler into second Shifter's Heirs is what I'm going to call here. Yeah, I mean, Vegas Sources are really, really at an end. Yeah. And with both Doomers already being out of the deck, there's really nothing which could help him or break him back. Yeah. I mean, he's doing this due diligence to see if there's any opening, because Warrior could have an awkward hand. Mm -hmm, that's right. But, um, I mean, Warrior can now even start being aggressive with Grom, for example. Oh, yeah, and he does. Oh. Okay. Sets it up for the lethal next turn. Mm hmm. 
yeah, that's fine. I was just like, yeah, why not just throw Grom out there, but you can set up lethal this way. It's the same difference. Two turn lethal. And Wagus needs to pick up something dramatic here. That is not going to uh, do it if he taps as well, which yeah. he probably will. So yeah, it's, it will probably be. Oh, he concedes. All right, so game two ends in a 1-1 score for Unid versus Wagus. Unid, of course, trying to get to the finals. Imagine if a finals is an all gamers origin finals. Oh, that would, that would be, be pretty insane. epic. Yeah, that would be very epic. Yeah, practice partners going to going really far in tournaments. You've de you've had your fair share of that facing against Tice and and RDU in tournaments. Fair yeah, that's to right, that's right. Practice. But that was in the semifinals. So. Yeah. But yeah, it's never a good feeling to face teammates in in any kind of tournaments. You eventually, got to do it though if you're if you're as good as you guys practice and you guys win all the time. That's right. That's right. All right. So uh, Wagyu's on the coin here. You thinking about keeping Emperor Thoris in? I mm -hmm. think that's uh, really valuable to keep as Druid. Well, I guess. I mean, uh, it's not that Warrior can always answer him, and it's also not that Warrior can prevent you from waiting for him. Even even in combination with stuff like Maligos and Fendel, um, it just gives Thoris so much potential. Yeah, I agree there. Uh... And I also like that Wegu's threw away Raven Idol. I think um, yep. a lot of people feel tempted to keep it early on, but you, it, it, Raven Idol gets so much better as the game develops because you have the situation which Raven Idol needs to be called for. Mm -hmm. But you can also combine it with Fandral. Yep, Fandral also for more mm -hmm. card quality. So there's already a Twilight Summoner in the hand, and usually Druid doesn't have tools against an Azot with a lot of minions. So that's probably what you need yeah. wants to collect. I really like Twilight Summoner. Every time I attack, you just hear the signature of it. It just feels like such a flavorful card. It's one of the reasons why we like Hearthstone. Yes, yes, definitely agree there. So there can already be a Thoris in this turn if yeah. I mean, oh. if Vegos thinks that uh, Vorya cannot address it. But I mean, with four armor, it feels likely in a lot of capacities, and you like Shield Stamp, of course, being one of them. Slam War Axe is also an awesome possibility. Execute is a possibility. But at the same time, your follow-up plays are pretty strong. You have yeah. Azure Drake, mm -hmm. you have Nourish. Uh, you even have uh, the, the Arcane Giant as you continue to play these cheaper spells. Yeah, and so it's also completely blocking the Warrior's turn, putting that aside. So Warrior will also only be able to armor up into right. Shield Slam that turn. And they have a lot of turn fours that they want to proactively play. You know, yeah. Twilight Summoner being one of them, Investitorin or Barnes. So, exactly. Yeah, I, don't, I actually wouldn't mind it. Disruption plus the fact that it leads into a good curve as the turns develop is A-OK -A -okay for me. And it shows so juicy. Uh, but, I mean, for four mana in at for turn four is obviously also... It's, Interesting. Yeah, it's the thing you do. All right, well, that gives Warriors some time to develop, and Wagyu is taking it really slow. Mm -hmm. You need just also through the Jessica, which is probably also one of the key cards in this matchup, just being able to tank up to uh, out of Maligo's range, just being very, very important. Yeah, it's definitely. Um, as we've seen that sometimes Druid tries to just bum rush the Warrior down. Warrior does tend to stabilize, but sometimes it just doesn't have enough health to, to be able to out, outlast it. That's right. So this one, she's wow. kind of straight, yeah. Well, that works pretty well. Now you get the initiative against Druid, and 5-5 five five is just annoying enough that Druid can't deal with it easily. So what do you... I mean, you can nourish for cards, but you can also just dragon, yeah. dragon brass and shape shift it. Yeah. Your life total is not that important, so you don't mind that much losing five life against this. Yeah, I like Feral Rage a lot better than the Wrath. Wrath is more versatile to draw cards. Sure. I think drawing cards is pretty important. I mean, people kept kept telling me that you know your goal as Druid is to never really use nourish for crystals in this matchup. To always try to draw cards as much as you can because mm -hmm. you yep. need to out out resource the warrior early on. Mm -hmm. But with cards like Kale, you're not going to out resource them anytime soon. That was really efficient and a great draw here for you need. Yeah, I mean, Kang coming down is so important. Also, addressing being able to address this dragon just for nothing. Um, yeah, so not that much which is missing for the warrior. Especially also no this Sylvanas is so insane. Yeah, now is the time you start looking for Raven Idol solutions, perhaps. Uh, you could let Sylvanas steal it. 
and then try to answer the giant on the following turn. So your hand's looking like a lot of spells. So I'm, I'm feeling like Nourish is the first primary tool you're looking at. Mm -hmm. And then um, you can kill off Karen with the Wrath cycle and trade it to the 4-5 if you want to prevent Sylvanas from getting anything good. Yeah, I like it. He also just got access to... Oh, actually access to Fenrir might change because that makes the Wrath also much more valuable for the future. That's true. But you're still cycling with Wrath, so whether it does 1 damage or 4 damage feels not relevant in this situation. Yeah, it's fine, yeah. I also like it, like, Wrath 1, trading it. And you still got another Wrath for this Fendrel, right? Mm -hmm. So maybe even first cycling with the Dragon and then getting the full potential for Fendrel. Yep. Basically also what you mentioned earlier, that we didn't uh, see um, any Raven Idols yet, so also waiting until they arrive and then getting the full value from the Fendrel is very, very nice. So there's actually a lot of choices this turn. Um, just a car is the first thing that I looked at, but you know there was a case for playing some of the other things too. Keeping Sylvanas alive is also really annoying for Druid. <laughs> so. Okay, so I mean the broad's still missing, so Druid has the ability to maybe even overexpand and then just outvalue the warrior, maybe dealing 10 damage per turn while the warrior can only receive four armor every. I wouldn't mind trying to keep Sylvanas alive, because. But then at the same time, their opponent drew so many cards, so it's most likely ability for your opponent to remove Savannah's mm -hmm. anyways. Yep. So that's probably going through his mind. Yeah, I also think so. Um, so Fenrir, Brass is one option here. I wouldn't even mind it because you can also play the Giant as well. Do you feel like that's extending a little bit too much on board? No, I mean, Fenrir and Giant would probably be fine. But, well, that's probably better now. Yikes. So. It's true, it's just gonna fatigue in like four turns. <laughs> it's gonna draw so many. Wrath Cycle, Nourish draws cards, he's played Azure Drake. And also about the overexpand, I mean, you need to put some resources. I mean, a giant alone won't do it. If the warrior receives four armor every turn and loses eight life, that's just not enough. So wow. you need to at least commit. Oh, he's going everything in here. Wow. And, and oh, he's Raven Idols. Oh, Two Raven oh, Idols. Raven Idols and he does oh no, he's, wait oh he's wasted God. too much time. He's wasted too much time. Oh wow, this uh yeah Wagyu's Okay, it won't take too much time to think about it. Raven and not being able to pick up minions is pretty significant here. Mm -hmm. It's actually why you wait and you camp on Vandril and Raven Idols in this matchup. You actually don't tend to play them early on. Because you're waiting for the other path. Hmm. And I think Wagyu's gonna get punished here. So he basically played the dragon first to draw and then the Fender. Okay, so otherwise he, he would have cycled into one Raven either, right? Mm. Mm. Yeah, I was perfectly fine with uh, the Wrath there uh, with mm. the Azure Drake and then Hero Power it down and then you would have gotten the Raven Eye on. And, uh, even even using the Innervate in that position to put the Giant out and you would have had yeah. Drake Giant. Yeah, Both yeah, would have been yeah. pretty good too. I was also thinking maybe Fenrir Wrath and I mean we know that out of that Nourish would have came. Oh, okay. So that's a blank. That's pretty unlucky. <laughs> but I mean, given that you need also had really good Barnes outcomes. I don't think you'd be too mad. So Wagyu's lost the Fandral value, but still has a really big hand. And who knows? Raven Idol could pick up another important thing, like maybe a Fandral. Mm -hmm. nah, he's going to do it for spells, right? Or do you want minions? At this point, you have... Oh, oh. my god. Nine mana minions seems to be pretty reasonable. Huh. Killing the Barnes right away. Yeah. That's pretty comfortable. Wow. That Unreal. is quite amazing. You know, in Arena, people consider North Sea Kraken to be as good as a legendary minion. They just call it a legendary minion. Oh yeah, of course, it's How insane. It is. It's like 9 mana, 9, 7 dealing for it's insane. And, you know, Uni doesn't have the execute, doesn't have the brawl. But Slam and Bash isn't doing it. Yeah. Just... Ouch. <laughs> it's a... Uh... Yeah, I was expecting that 9 attack to connect to face, but not able to do it. And once again, Druid has to take some board initiative here. Mm -hmm. I mean, that being said, uh, Unit uh, uh, wasn't able to tank up this very turn because he really needed to get rid of this board. So that's already kind of 4 damage. That's true. And I guess when you see Druid hold so many cards, you're thinking, you need to tank up a lot, because what if he has Malikos plus a bunch yeah. of spells? And... Twilight Drake. Hmm. I mean, Twilight Drake's a four nine. Of cards. <laughs> this position looks pretty appealing to me. That's awesome. 
Okay, all things considering, Raven Island for minions can turn out to be pretty terrible if you get three or less minions or cost minions. Oh, like oh, oh, what, what is uh, not the roots? The roots are like seven damage to the face, right? He just for the echo light. Hmm. Yeah, actually, like drawing another card no matter what. Seems to be a little bit over the top because we really, really need this damage once you draw Maligos. So maybe, uh, maybe rather playing some of these seven drops yeah. and the Arcan Giant seems to be way better. Yeah, ba basically you're using, you're trading off seven damage to make sure your opponent doesn't draw a, a single more card because that Acolyte's going to draw a card either way, unless he wants to stop it from activating Execute. Okay. Okay, so I think he just wanted to play around Execute possibly. Infested Torrent Brawl, what do you think? Is that an option? Or it do you play Iron Forge Portal? That is an option. Iron Forge Portal Brawl is also this yeah. kind of the similar thing. You don't get a 2 2, but on the other hand, you get 4 armor, right? Yeah. So, yeah. It's more mana efficient, I guess. Mm -hmm. That's right. I guess the upside is Infested Torrent does leave you a 2 2, but I don't know how important that 2 2 is. Mm hmm. Yep. You know, I was thinking, what if he Iron Forge Portal into an Infested Torrent? <laughs> uh, all right, let's see who wins the brawl. Is it the Giants? Is it the Pandas? Or is it the Knight of the Wild? Man, yeah. I'm still kind of disappointed it wasn't the 4 9 Azure or Twilight Drake. That thing would have been nuts. Yeah, I also think so. 4 9. For 4 mana. Oh, there's Maligos. But not the 7 damage. So. 6, 23, so Okay, but your opponent just showed that he had to brawl desperately against two minions. Do you play the Ancient of War for a 10-5? I, you, uh, you, oh, you 100%, <laughs> you read my mind. You uproot that bad boy right now, Wagyu's, or I'm sending you upstairs without dinner. Uh, Drop that bad uh, boy. Plant him in the no. ground. Oh, <laughs> boo. Boo this man! Nah, just don't do that. He's he's new to the competitive scene. We need to be nice to him. And there's also she All right, the punish. Have punish him. <laughs> a little bit. A little uh, yeah. Punish him. Is there a way you can gain armor from it? I don't think you can. Um, there are a lot of good minions you can get from the, uh, the Ironforge portal. Playing around Spawn of Shadows. Uh, that's not one of them, Froden. <laughs> that's definitely not one of them. There's no justice. <laughs> there's no. Imagine if he uprooted. Just kidding. He would have been able to shield slam the 10 5. So, uh, oh, now Ragnaros. that you've oh, Ragnaros. And Shapeshift, that's insane. That's just the super, that's the best top deck you yeah. could have drawn. Just insane. This is what you wanted to do from the entire time as the warrior. Um, the warrior wanted to, um, sorry, as a druid. The druid wanted to outcard the warrior, and the warrior's just not being able to keep up here. And uh, you need. I'm never gonna use the execute here. He's gonna rely on the next draw for brawl, perhaps. Hmm. But is that a potential lethal setup here from Druid? So you could. What would you do? You would probably uh, moonfire the torrent, attack face, and moonfire it again. So yep. 11 Double damage. Double swipe face. So to 10, yeah. With moonfires, and then you hit face. I think that should be it. Yeah, or like this. Yeah, that's probably better. Yep, uh, it's actually lethal. It's lethal, yep. Mm -hmm. Well done here from Wegus. A uh, little rocky on the way there, but you know the fact that he was able to stick to his general macro line of drawing a ton of cards uh, will be able to end this game. So uh, you need drops the warrior versus druid, which is you know I was kind of expecting Warren to outlast the druid, considering that he had a pretty decent start. You know, Twilight Summer came down, yeah, he had Sylvanas yeah, up absolutely. against the giant. Uh, but the Druid able to draw a lot of cards. The North Sea Kraken. The North Sea Kraken. Did help a little bit. Yeah. Now, yeah, the Wild did his roll too. The fact that he was a six attack minion was right. very relevant. Right, yeah. A lot of damage, just um, uh, counterfeiting this tank up every turn, mm -hmm. every turn, pitching these two, three, four more damage in just to get him into this Maligos turn range. Or in this case, we didn't even see Maligos, but just leaving yeah. him in the end. That was, that was a fun game. I like that one. Going to game number four. Wag uses up two to one. You need in order to go to the finals to potentially meet his teammate and put a stamp on the Grand Prix history for 2016. Needs to win this game to stay alive, and he's going to turn to Zoo Warlock to do it. Now, once again, uh, Zoo Warlock against Druid has been wildly in favor of the Zoo Warlock. I don't know if Horse Rider changes that. Do you think Horse Rider makes it more f 
better or worse against Druid? Well, uh, I think it's probably with no real, uh, with any real effect because the horse riders in there probably for the, yeah, I mean, the for an Argent Squire or for whatever that is. So for the other card, which would be number 30, so I don't think that has any impact at all. Okay. But I guess the Living Groots against the Flame definitely did have a big impact here. Yeah. Very big impact, although it still hasn't really changed that much, ultimately, from it. Uh, we've seen people start off just removing zoo minions, but then mm -hmm. they can't keep going one for one. Oh, interesting. So he could have huh. utilized the Wrath, but instead he opted in just to deal with this one damage. So basically saying the Wrath in my hand is worth more than this one to taunt minion. I think that's a pretty fair assumption. Uh, there's oh, yeah. a lot more targets you want to Wrath, like oh, Knife Jugglers, mm -hmm. Direwolf Alphas. Oh, the Sofa being a very, very nice pickup also with the imp in combination. Yeah, if he picks up Silverware Golem, that's pretty much lights out for Druid in the very beginning stages of the game. And that being said, we can also see uh, Druid ramping here. And once it, uh, Druid ramped successfully, he will also have the ability to uh, block Zu with these Ancient of Wars. And if Zu just overexpands too much, maybe even a spell part swipe might end the game the other way around. <laughs> oh my god, that is such a strong draw. Yeah. That is like the strongest draw you could have as Zu. And he still has opportunity to pick up Silver or Golem next turn. Summon that, draw a card from that. Yeah, just insane. Kind of nutty. Just insane. I mean, Beko's knowing that and trying to deny at least the burst by rassing the Imp here. So that devalues the Doomguard very, very much. Yeah. Uh, I don't think that necessarily wants to stop here. Opponent just used Mulch. Okay. I that take it right slow. The first competitive Iron Forge Rifleman we have ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> Did you like this over the Doom Guard? I guess uh, yeah. you don't overextend this way. Yeah, I guess I like it. I mean, you also want that the Doom Guard only discards you one and not two cards. Sure. I'm definitely on board with that play. So, Druid's stuck in that awkward position where they wish that they had Starfall, but they just don't have it. It would have lined up very well with this board. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's it's really awkward, right? I mean, yeah. you have to <laughs> use this nourish maybe even for cards. But this is why I like Thanos and Druid very often mm -hmm. because of scenarios like this. You know, six mana swipe, not really clearing everything. The spell power swipe, completely different story. Okay, yeah, Doomguard here, oh, confirming eleven damage, bringing uh, him to six, and that pretty much is it. Druid has fifteen to thirty-one. 37 worth of mana to play on turn 7. Hmm. So. Yeah, so blocking this, but Zoo can just overpower this 510 and the 4. 510 just did on board. However, if you need whiffs, well, that's not really a whiff. <laughs> no. Oh man, that's pretty strong. Okay, if he drakes into swipe, perhaps? Mm hmm. Drake into swipe. Could There's be the out. There's not enough mana for Dragon to uh, but I Drake guess... Drake into Innervate Swipe. Oh, all right, okay. Yeah. <laughs> That's fair. So, yeah. I mean, the Ancient of War... Uh, can... Could eventually, but probably not. Okay, uh, let's see. Moonfire and Swipe doesn't really bail you out. Oh, man. Ragnaros shot wouldn't be relevant because you're just dead on the board. Mm-hmm. So it looks like you are just going to play Ancient of War and pass. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. Um, Would you Moonfire to keep the one health? I don't know if that makes the, that difference. What? I think you might need to use Mal Maligos with Moonfire. I mean, are you even dead on board? So let's assume he trades uh, five and probably also the count this and this. No, yeah. Uh, still some bit? <laughs> okay, so if the one one trades into it, that councilman becomes four, you can play two more minions, so that's six. That's nine, so six goes into it. You have to send the five and the six into it, uh, so that's okay. the thing, yeah, right? Yeah, 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 you're right, you're right. So unless he so draws you any alive. kind of buff, yeah, you, you are still alive. So if he picks up any uh, buff, like Abuse of Sergeant, he wins, though. Yeah, yeah, immediately. Yep. Mm -hmm. So if he uses this, he tries to stay alive by that damage, so I guess Okay. that helps a little bit. Oh, it definitely does. Oh. oh. Die with Alpha. That's yeah, th yeah, that's already enough. You can just die up with Alpha. Oh. Hmm. Um, the oh positioning no, the positioning, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, positioning uh -oh. messes it up. Awkward. 
but it's just still is enough. Yeah, you can yeah, just yeah, send yeah, yeah. three on the right side into it and then kill it with Doomguard. Yes, yeah. yes, I see that now. Just has to play this one minion, get the extra buff, and it actually works out. The positioning almost mattered. Yes, it is. yes. So it goes into game five. That's very exciting, yeah. I mean, that's the way you want to go in the semifinals. That's exactly the way you want it. Yeah, not not Zoo three zero. Well, Zoo might three zero, but <laughs> you know, it, Zoo being able to do well against the Warrior has just also been a big story of it. Um, can the Warrior hold off the Zoo? But this time on the other side for Wegius, he needs that fiery War Axe. He needs that Ravaging Ghoul early on. Mm -hmm. You can also already see fatigue um, taking its toll. I mean, you see, you need already being. Uh, uh, or looking a little bit exhausted, taking his glasses off. Yeah, or maybe that's his intensity moment, like, mm -hmm. you know, when he's really starting to get super in zoned into the game. Okay. Mm -hmm. Oh, that's not necessarily the the fiery war actually looking for. Why do you he just has a very slow hand. You need is like, no warx, no warx, no warx. Yeah. And there is no warx. Well, he still has a turn to draw it, yeah. That gives him some time to slow things down. Voidwalker is not like the utmost priority to coin Fire War Axe. Mm -hmm. Flame Imp is a very big one, though. That's right. So now it would be very convenient. <laughs> convenient now is the Fire War Axe, right? And no. But another good card against Zoo, so it's not too bad. But yeah, this Elise Starseeker is really just a dead card in his hand. The Execute as well being really, really terrible against Zoo. Yeah, execute pretty much only good against Doom Guards and I guess MK boss if it gets damaged, but that's about it. Uh, um, the the Wegus, does he want to remove the the Night Juggler this turn? You do have to give up your coin. Mm -hmm. Oh man, that's so awkward. This also kind of sh uh, you know when you see your opponent coin out like that. Mm -hmm. Can you make a read on their hand, like, hey, they don't have like a good four mana minion. Yeah. They, don't, they wouldn't play it. Maybe a little bit, but I also think that uh, Vigus just thinks that it's just way too much damage if this, if this knife juggler happens to survive. And I guess he's right about it. I mean, this knife juggler would have probably delivered 10 damage or something alone. But now he's starting to find fall behind on board a lot with no brawl in sight. But a revenge, which could eventually be of interest, depending on how you need to play. Also, double refugee cool, just very, very good against Zoo. Look at that! Look at that, the impact of the execute nerf right now. <laughs> the fact that it's being two mana is so annoying. Well, you Star Seeker hits the board, and now you need can really start getting ped. But I guess you also start thinking about the brawl turn. Do you want to extend into it? If you want to pace yourself, you go for this life tap instead. Mm -hmm. So, what about uh, the positioning, by the way? The councilman is a little bit in the middle. Uh, yeah, I, uh, if there's anything that's been a little bit consistent here with you need uh, zoo positioning, is that the, the possessed villager keeps finding itself in the middle. Yep. Mm -hmm. And I can understand if you want to keep it in the middle because it improves your defender of Argus mm -hmm. opportunity, yeah. but it does make your direwolf alpha a lot worse. And he had direwolf in hand with no Argus, so it is interesting to, to see how he positioned that way. Oh, you need seems also to just ignore the potential brawl, or I mean, I don't know whether he feels that he already overexpanded into it, but uh, he seems to go the line that he says, okay, brawl, whatever. I mean, if there is really a brawl, so be it. But if there is none, I might just win on the spot. Yeah. In this case, he's able to at least deal with the Dark Shark Councilman. Mm -hmm. A lot of one ones are generated, and in the end, seven power remains on board, or eight, nine, excuse me. Still a lot of damage for 15, 15 damage available. I think at this point you can probably make the read that there is no brawl available for Vegas if you are in the position of you need. I mean, this this board last turn was just worth a brawl. And if there is none, well, there is probably none. Yeah. Uh, the, with your opponent pretty much at six minions on board or so, it's like they definitely should brawl. Yeah, exactly. So you need a melee taps, uh, not really choosing to play Doom Guard here. Yeah. Um, and now is stuck with a little bit awkward hand. I mean, Defender of Argus is possible to help you to like protect the Direwolf. I like it. Oh, how oh, interesting trading. It's really interesting. He could have also uh, just played the Defender of Argus and then traded only one. Yeah. I guess in this case he wants more power with the attack to the face. Okay. Mm. 
interesting choice. Yeah, uh, yeah. I, I guess makes it a little bit less vulnerable to revenge. You know, maybe he doesn't want to get too much, mm -hmm. like make his board too weak to revenge this way. I also think that he wouldn't have lost uh, attacks on the face, right? Because... Um, yeah, I guess you're right. Maybe yeah. I, was, I was thinking that he didn't want to push too much damage, so he prioritized trading right, so not to right. rush him down. But I think he might be right. Because sometimes if you don't trade, you leave up minion and you go face and then revenge wrecks you. Okay, okay, that's that's a good point. Um, so well, this ravaging cool. It's just oh, insane. Man. And now you need still has damage from the hand, but it's oh. a little bit worse. A zero golem hits the sick. <laughs> it's the hand, and that's really sick. So you can either go for Liberium for a two and a three, or you can just play the flame and, and the Dungard if you want to play it a little bit. Say, oh what? my God, is he really doing oh. it? Is he really doing it? And, oh my God, How did it worked out for him. How did he do that? That is just insane. Wow, he that trades. That was just insane. Okay, play he plays around revenge, revenge also a very go. strong play. And that was just insane. Yeah, I I don't know, man. I couldn't handle. Look at that. He's he's cupping his hands. <laughs> he's zoning in. He's becoming life coach. Oh yeah. <laughs> wow. I don't know. My heart is racing from watching that life coach. It's just insane, and also such tension. But Vigus has access to so much armor up. It's just insane. Yeah. yeah. He can just armor up. Another four armor, just putting himself out of uh, range, and also telling the zoo, hey, I mean, you can yeah. race me down, but you have to give me my revenge range. All right, well, um, you know, Unique can draw more cards if he wants to still play around this revenge. Just, like, tap his opponent down to 13 again. I'll find it! Yeah, it seems that he wants. I mean, it's 14 damage, so... Uh, well, actually, he could have tapped for Lisa, uh, could have he not? 3, 6, 8, 9, 14, well, 19. Yeah, he could have tapped for a second Dunga Lethal. I think he already tapped, though. So oh, uh, he's unable to get it right now. No, uh, no, I mean, like, before the sacrifice, or did he tap first? Yeah, he tapped first. Oh, yeah, yeah, oh, never tapped mind. first. Okay, sure. Got the Argent Horse Rider. Sure, sure. 5, 10, 11 right now. So, gonna hold off. Once again, playing around that revenge. Of course, if Warrior picks a Fiery War Axe, he can actually oh, deal with himself. God. Whoa! Oh my god. Well, you couldn't, you couldn't wait forever for it. I mean, it was gonna come eventually. Oh, not bad. It's actually, it could have been a lot worse. Oh, yeah. It's either this or the Doom Guard surviving, best case scenario. Mm. Second Doom Guard. Oh, okay, he can play all and the Librarian. That's actually a pretty good turn. And then trade into the 3 1. Oh, definitely yeah. trading into it. Yeah, you don't want that he draws two cards with the Equal Light. It would also be very inconsistent with the line, I think, if you wouldn't trade here. Yeah, and then... I mean, then you just become, become revenge. I mean, you trade yeah, revenge. Yeah. yeah, pass. Pass. Okay. <laughs> Does he really try to outvalue the warrior here? Oh, Fire War Axe finally enables revenge! Uh, may, I don't know. I mean, there's only such an extent where you can play around revenge. It's... Uh, I mean, he's missing these two damage there, yeah. the six damage there, the four damage there. So. Yeah, he would have killed them by now, right? Yeah, yeah, probably. <laughs> <laughs> but at the same time, his opponent did have revenge. I know. And he would have been wrecked by it. I don't know. You give Warrior time, you play into their game plan, so it feels like a damned if you don't, damned if you do type of scenario. Yes, yes. And now, you need can feel the game slipping away, slowly but surely. Okay. I mean, that's fair, he can still play all the cards, so that was not too bad. My shield for Maybe... Mm, go face. Maybe even going face now, yeah, I think now... Oh, now man. Okay, but he's using revenge, so maybe he feels like this bit board presence is what oh, he needs. Oh my god, there's a Baron Gerdon, can he play him? Yeah, oh, I think he can. Oh wow, that's okay, board just Baron clear. Gerdon, shield block, yeah. I think that this is, is over. Board clear. Or even shield slam, yeah, he can also yeah. shield him if he wants. And with this, Bergen does two damage to himself. So, is there a runner runner scenario here? I don't think so. Doom Guard to Soul Fire Tap doesn't really. Oh, it's not it. Oh, man. He was so close. And you can oh, see the exasperation can... falling over Unit's face. Oh, my God. And he was so close. He, he already did. felt the victory in drafts. Oh, man. The Zoo Warlock, which has performed so well, is just not coming up. And. 
a lot of decisions for not attacking. Was that the right call here? And with, you know, Flame Imp is just going to be stranded in his hand. If, what? Oh. <laughs> Where did this Big Daddy Sock Champ come from? <laughs> what? <laughs> oh my god. Okay. The animation of the purple stop here was, you know, the board was a metaphor for you needs tournament hope right now. He just stomped on it. And that's gonna do it. Game oh is god. over. Wagyu is going to the grand finals. Having defeated the Zoo Warlock with his Control Warrior. Job well done. And uh, we have a Swedish player from hometown representing the finals. You know, we don't really see too much of the local scene in a lot of these dream hacks end up performing well. Um, but it's really cool to see it. You know, we had Evangelion, the hometown team from Valencia, doing it. And when you do, you see a lot of people get excited for it a lot in the scene. So it's very exciting to see. Yeah, it's amazing. Actually, day one, you know, I, I wasn't up here with you guys. I was downstairs casting the Nordic Championships, which is another event going on. And what really stood out to, from that from me was that the amount of support that these local players do generate when they're playing on home territory. So amazing to see this from Vegus, who is now joining me here. My friend, congratulations. You are for our first grand finalist at yeah. DreamHack Winter. Must be an amazing feeling for you. Yeah. Oh, I'm surprised, actually. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm not prepared for this, but yeah. I feel I felt before the match, I felt pretty, pretty good and not very nervous. So uh, I've been pretty confident going in and I had the, a decent strategy that they actually played into, which I was surprised to see the Druid first. But uh, yeah, it feels great. <laughs> okay, straight away. I mean, the card was drawn right at the end. I was going to ask you about it anyway, but that inclusion of Sogoth the Slither in your warrior, because you're playing yeah. a pure control warrior strategy, right? No exactly. Azoth, Cthulhu, or anything. Talk to me about Sogoth. Like, why is that in the deck? What are you aiming at? Just yeah. Talk to me about the card. Uh, the Sogoth is a nod to like Tempo Mage Druid, also other like uh, control warriors. Mm -hmm. And uh, especially Sue, of course. I mean, they have POs and stuff, but uh, this card Sue that's popular right now plays Soulfire. So uh, I think it's a really powerful high end defensive tool, and uh, where it's just built to beat Sue and uh, other like Tempo Mage and aggressive decks. So I felt like Sogoth was the perfect fit for the deck. Yeah, super important for you, right? Because we've seen a lot of players falling by the wayside because they haven't been able to, you know, Q-snipe the zoo when it yeah. picks up a win, whereas you have that warrior available to fall back on. So must have performed exactly. really well for you this tournament. Guys, any other questions for him? Yeah, I mean, you said that uh, you were surprised to get here, but now you're here in the finals. Yeah. Uh, you know, the fact that you said you also started competing recently and started streaming recently, it's just really, I just want to make a comment, no question, that it's really cool to see more local talent really rise up because of tournaments like this, giving chances for you guys to succeed. So, job well done, man. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. I also saw that you, I mean, before the match, we were wondering, like, who might be the favorite, and mm -hmm. I was saying, yeah, I yeah. put my money on you because it you seem to also, in front of many thousands of people, not to get too excited or too nervous, but just making you play. And, I mean, this also proves the point yeah so, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah congrats to that yeah, thank you yeah i agree you've looked very calm overall but now it must be very real for you all of a sudden <laughs> right one more game yeah. the grand finals coming up are you, are you feeling nervous have the nerves increased as the day has gone on nah, not really okay. I'm, fe I'm feeling com i'm feeling good awesome yeah. well, it's probably the lack of like a screaming crowd or something yeah, yeah <laughs> sure <laughs> this is much more chill like outside this tavern it's just pretty much the rows for swiss and largely people have fanned out and joined the rest of the festival because the eliminations have gone down mm -hmm. only only him and one other guy will be standing in just a little bit there you go well vegus is a confident man you now get a little moment to chill find out who your opponent is going to be in the second semi-final so we will take a moment as well. Very, very quick break. We will be right back with the second semi-final to decide who is going to come up against this man right next to me, Vegus, in the grand final of the Hearthstone Grand Prix.